Uh, morning, Pezza. Uh, this one comes in from Piers M. Hashtag AskTGC. For fuck's sake, has there ever been a less deserved retention of, of the ashes? From the Bearstow debacle to this rain-soaked fiasco, it's an absolute farce that smirking Australia have ended up with the urn still in their hands. England comfortably the better side, as this test showed, gutting. Pezza, why is this happening to me? I'm the eldest boy. I'm the eldest boy. <laughs> this isn't fair, Pezza. Why is it happening to me, Daddy? <laughs> Change the rules, Daddy. The rules are wrong. <laughs> you're, you're watching The Great Cricketer, brought to you by Budgie Smuggler. BudgieSmuggler.com for all of your El Nino needs. Jeez, it's been toasty. Not in Manchester, though. Use the code Good areas at checkout for free shipping at budgiesmuggler.com. Uh, Pezza, why is it happening to me? That's life, brother. That is fucking mm. life. And life came down on the side of Australia overnight. <laughs> and it feels fucking mm. great. It feels fucking great. Um, mm. I don't know where you want to start with this, with just debasing ourselves with all-out gloating. You know, is it is it about... A treatise on the word retention, you know, like it's the second best mm-hmm. word in cricket. It it's got nothing to do with winning. It's got it's got nothing to do with proactivity or positivity. It, retention is merely denying the opposition something they wanted. And mm. and in many ways, from a grade cricket perspective, and I'll tell you what, if Australia isn't singing, I know it's only a draw, but if that isn't a G string laden <laughs> court jester hat. <laughs> wearing song Nathan yeah. Lyon over Zoom then I'm not here anybody yeah. who's played cricket and this is this is across the anglosphere and beyond who believes that isn't the sweetest result of all time has never played it, it, it's yeah, yeah, it's yeah. hollow it's immoral it's petty it's mm-hmm. undeserved it's glorious uh we we we, we're we follow convicts. we we're fucking convicts. We follow in the footsteps <laughs> of our forefathers. They've shown us how to do it. Uh, what Piers Morgan Piers M sorry says Piers M Piers M yeah. It's a symphony to the ears. I expect more. Uh, we've been reading it for the last two days. Been hearing various things in that guys. I've got Stuart Broad mm. saying, "Boss, we're too lucky to get wet." You know, V's R V <laughs> is coach. Brennan McCullum, lay it all on thick. It's just mm. sensational. Uh, Cumming, Cummings' hands are on the urn again. Yeah, it's six or seven yeah. years now for Australia. Um, the, the, the revolutionary Basball movement has won one Test in four. Hell of a team. <laughs> uh, Pez, I've actually just realised that um, that 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 question needed to be called a nonce. Uh, sorry, I, I hadn't realised. I apologise. <laughs> I apologise for that. Now, Pezza, let's call it out. England have been fantastic in this game. Ben Stokes said afterwards, you know, they feel like they couldn't have done much more. They bowled Australia out for three twenty. They scored four five seventy themselves, going at six and over. All of that's true. They played great cricket. Um, and also grade cricket. A lot of them did, including Zach Crawley, who was mad of the match. He literally did play grade cricket. Um <laughs> where I think he played mostly twos, threes. But um, you know, I've, I I am being triggered into a situation where um, I'm I'm looking at it, seeing like uh, a lot of people saying like, well, if things had just gone England's way, they'd be winning four nil. Australia, very very lucky to even exist. Um, and given that we are all convicts uh, and a colony, um, that is actually a fair point, I suppose, in lots of ways. Um, but uh, but so I'm being triggered a little bit into thinking like. Mm, I, I, I don't know, man. Um, I think Australia's been pretty pretty decent in this series, and um, and I think having a two nil series lead in a, in a country where it often does rain um, is just an advantage generally. And so um, and so cricket cricket usually fucks you and finds new ways to fuck you. And so the one time that one thing goes your way, I think um, I think you have to revel in that. So hundred um, percent. I feel like I'm being I'm being I'm being triggered. Into being a knob no, on the don't. internet. That's the trap. Um, That's the trap. Mm. Don't have to. So, because def- like, because pet, and speaking of traps as well, like, um, that like, 
Chris uh, Tremlett. Australia have played. Australia have played on the on the ego of England the entire series, and like that's just and that's part. That's a huge part of the reason why they're winning. Like Ben Stokes declares day one edge Baston, they fall runs short there. You know they 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 just gave they gave away runs. Um, the way Bairstow was dismissed, there was, there was a hubris in that dismissal as well. Not to mention that England in that first innings were like one for 180 at Lords, bowled out for 320, playing some of the most ridiculous shots you've ever seen. Um, they they didn't. They picked Wood late in the series. They picked Wokes late in the series. Um, but so you know, then Australia were just Australia were just slightly the better team uh, in both those games. England, Australia had the opportunity to win the heading lead. They didn't. England were the better team that time. Sometimes it rains in cricket. You know, I just like I just find the truth of like England. Uh, sorry, Australia have played on the ego of England, and um, and Chris Rogers said it brilliantly on the show the other day, a couple of weeks ago, where it's like you know playing fire with water, and that method. Uh, you know, Australia picked a team. I think in this in the, uh, they. They, they, they picked a team in this test match to draw the game. And whether that was right or wrong, I think there's lots of wrong about it. And I don't think um, necessarily that Pat Cummins had a great game. Well, no, not necessarily. He didn't, he didn't have a great game, especially on day two. Um, but uh, then it turns out that Mitchell Marsh plays a huge contribution by not only scoring 50 in the first innings, but also facing 100 balls in the third innings, uh, in the third innings of the game. Um, Cameron Green didn't contribute as much as they would have liked this time. But anyway... Australia have tactically, have they maybe just got it slightly better than England over the course of four test matches and just slightly been the better team? Or have England has nothing gone England's way except for winning all the tosses and having all the conditions every single session and England should be winning 4-0? Thoughts? <laughs> uh, I mean, the, the best team always wins because they find a way to win or draw mm. when it's raining. But yeah, you're right. I mean, uh, yeah, like uh, like in England played really well this game. They've they've nearly dusted Australia in three days. <laughs> Let's face yeah. it. Like Australia have been belted in this game and been saved by rain. Uh, I I have heard it suggested at least once that that Cameron Green being in and Alex Carey coming next kind of just you know and Australia's length and tail kind of justifies the selection with the rain i mean i just think just just to criticize that that's ridiculous i mean if if to me if if australia picks a better team a more competitive one that actually puts england on the back foot they don't get themselves into this ass clenching situation in the first place i'd be surprised if yeah, they keep point. this team for the next one um so you have to call that out there but yeah b- beyond that you reading some things you would you would be surprised to learn that Australia's even been participating in these ashes. Of course, they've, they've of course they've succeeded tactically over England um, so far. Though there is still one game to play, and England could make it two two. Um, but the, if if people want to look at why it's two one, despite the revolutionary um, you know zeal and movement of Basball, uh, it's probably because of Basball's own excesses. You know, in games one and two, if, if England's going to look at mm. itself. Um, and it does like to look at itself a lot. Um, in fact, it's mm. all about England all the time, it seems. But yeah, it's the it was the excesses of baseball which were uh, clinically exploited by Australia. Uh, and so, f- so you know, however thrilling baseball has been, and it has, and it's and it's emerging, and it has improved as the series has gone on. Uh, it was just too wild at the start. That's just that just you just can't escape that and um australia's tactics for those first two games were spot on to exploit it uh australia's had some luck with the rain now oh well that's cricket you know anyone who knows cricket <laughs> yeah, yeah. anyone who's played cricket <laughs> at, at any like at any base level understands that luck in cricket whether it be through rain or umpiring decisions or whatever it usually deserts you you know like it, it is usually against you it is a game of brutality and failure and mm-hmm. on the odd occasion you receive it you fucking steal it. You grab it with both hands and you fuck off <laughs> out of there. And that's exactly <laughs> what Australia is doing now. I mean, all anyone who is seriously saying that it's hollow, it's immoral, I've seen even from Stuart Broad the word unjust come into play. I mean, <laughs> like th- uh, that is... That is cry me amore territories. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's be adult about it. Uh, if you find yourself 2-0 oh. down, subject to the whims of the weather, you have no one else to blame but yourself. 
if the sc- series scoreline is 2-1, you have no one to blame but yourself. Like, there is, there's, there's pundits chin-stroking now about evolutions the game must make, you know, to make most use of the mm. light and against the weather. Just it's a very convenient time to commence these conversations. A lot of those are, a lot, <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah. of those are fine. They're fine points, you know, like in, mm. in and of themselves. But I would also argue that, you know, in the um, in the kind of the discourse stakes, as Radiohead said, everything is in its place. <laughs> You know the uh, the the symphony of the English tears is part of the overall symphony, and we get to sit back now because of a band of weather on eight bit fucking three second jolty Bureau of Meteorology <laughs> shit saying no, nah, it's raining. We get to sit back and go. Cummings is holding the urn. It's I think everything's in its place, frankly, uh, mm. and you know you can't deny um, that it will happen. That you know shoe on the other foot, same shit. <laughs> you know, that's it's, yeah. everything is in its place. It's just landed for Australia. You know, as Eric from Billy Madison said, "Good news for me." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I completely agree. I think the, I think a lot of those conversations are, are interesting conversations to have. Um, but uh, you know, I don't think it's that feasible to move a test match forward because there's weather around for your team. I don't think it's feasible to start games at 6 a.m. or finish them at 10 p.m. so you get all the overs in that you need to play. Change the rules so you, so your team can have the best chance to win when you're when, when you are winning, um, which is obviously a great time to sing as well. Uh, roof on stadia, you know, all interesting ideas. Um, have those conversations when your team's winning, not just like in a moment. It's in a fleecy moment. We're like, well, this is fucking bullshit. I think this should happen right now, and then I won't change anything that's anything in my life at all until this pops up again but when but when these circumstances come around again and, and actually aids my team no i think the rules just i mean the rules is what they, they are what they are you know and that's the game that we invented um you know civility is an interesting thing pez but um it's also just uh you know, <laughs> you know um at the same time sometimes it rains sometimes it doesn't sometimes maybe good sometimes maybe shit <laughs> you know it's uh uh what are you gonna do um so I uh, yeah I I don't know um I think I think Australia have done well in the series and they are also a team that plays in the Ashes and this time things have gone their way ten years ago I think a lot of people have seen ten years ago uh, it rained at Old Trafford uh, when Australia were on top on day five and it was a draw England uh, then retained the Ashes on then that was the third test in that series uh, and then turns out they won the last game and then they won three 0 that series maybe that'll happen this time maybe it won't. Um, but uh, wait, what are you going to do? Uh, you know? I know. I wonder. Yeah, there's a, it's a funny confluence of factors here as well because, I mean, in Australia, the, like, the, 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 the main headline on theage.com.au is about missing millions in the Pacific. I mean, I don't even think... Uh, you like, we, we, when, Australia ain't getting out of bed unless they win the Ashes. You know, so um, and, yeah. and and England are crying over the fact that they're not going to hold it for you know for another three to four years. Uh, so I, I, I suppose guess- it, it'll be it'll be ten years by the time they because uh, twenty fifteen was the last time they held them. Mm-hmm. Is that yeah yeah? And which and so the next time the Ashes will be twenty twenty five. So it'll be ten years by the mm-hmm. time they get the next get the chance to do it, which we know they won't do it in Australia. So um, yeah, I mean that's that, that, that was kind of getting to my point, like. I just felt like if, if England had kind of climbed back in this series, it, it was going to be like open top bus parades and DVDs at, te- at 10 paces for, you know, edging a series at home 3-2 potentially after giving up a massive <laughs> lead without even addressing what happens when they come out here. Australia, you know, to a lot of people have been playing like um, defensive, regressive cricket. The, the deep point was un-Australian to begin with. And it's like, yeah, and, and, mm-hmm. and you know, come, come and th- there's... There's talk of, of Cummins standing down or resigning as a fast bowling captain who can't uh, right. you know, can't get it done. It's like, what, what? but he's he's holding the urn in England. <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> you know, he's had like 20 tests as captain. He's won 11, drawn five, lost four. He's won the World Test Championship. I mean, there's, it's got to say something about his captaincy and also something about his luck today with rain. Uh, Cause yeah, like there's a there's a fine line between standing on the balcony at Old Trafford, holding the urn, and being in jail as he would have been. Uh, and that's, <laughs> so that just speaks to the uh, dysfunction of the discourse in Australia. I mean, we're we ain't we're no angels here either. 
you know? Uh, so, um, so, yeah, uh, it, yeah, it, it is funny how you can, uh, you know, reconstruct the truth of what's happened um, after a bit of luck has come into play. Uh, England have been growing into the series enormously and Australia, you know, inexplicably have, you know, been on the correct end, the good end of two straight days of rain. Great. Mm. <laughs> Play on. <laughs> yeah, but what about that time Stuart Broad nicked it and didn't walk? So, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, I don't know. I'm having a good time. Yeah. Uh, shall we look forward to the oval? He goes, I mean, yeah, like, I, so. I want to I wanna just ha- I want to take maybe 48 hours to enjoy the fact that, I mean, let, let, let's, let's face it, Australia retaining the urn is... It's, it's particularly meaningful for us because we don't have to receive online barbs from England that mean anything anymore. We can't be hurt. I, can't, I mean, if, if Australia's going to win in Australia in, in two years, then it's four years before we can be hurt again, and that's if Test Cricket even exists by then. So it's, it's actually... <laughs> I think that's yeah. a big thing as well. It's like it's, it's the last ever series of Test Cricket and Australia have managed to deny England the, the open-top bus, and, and that's really meant everything to me. So it's, it's not a... Um, not a phrase I imagine myself saying as I was studying at university or anything like that. You know that the, the career would ladder up to, to that kind of comment. That <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you know, Pez, you know, you know, an American sports player say the two greatest word in sports: game six. In in Australia, retention. <laughs> in cricket, ret- retain. That's retain. Right. Oh, right. oh, oh, absolutely <laughs> salivating. I also like the idea, Pez. I also like the idea that, um, you know, like the series deserved, you know, one, 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 one big game. And it's like, none of us deserve anything. We're fucking cricket fans. We're all losers anyway. N- none of us deserve anything. We're fucking losers. Like, like there's, hey, there's losers nothing, bordering nothing. on pedophiles. A lot of us. <laughs> I mean, there's like, like when has when has uh, cricket ever thrown up a circumstance where everything ladders up perfectly, That's where right. you get like one big payoff? It's it's never happened. Yeah. Um, so the idea that's like. Oh, that's a, that's a shame. What a, it's a bit of a damp squib. And look, look, both things can be true. Look, we all, we almost had the thing, and it would have been awesome. Mate, and, you know, blah, it's blah, not blah, a blah. damp like, squib for me. It's never happened. If if, <laughs> if if somehow Australia jags this series three one, like wins at the Oval, <laughs> it'll be the funniest thing I've seen for a very very long time. <laughs> uh, mm. So it I don't know. There's it's one. I, I just I just push back against that. The the damp squib argument is like firmly rooted in everything being about England and England owning everything. Get fucked. Mm. It's not. Yeah. I'm tired. Yeah. Uh, so to, so I mean, to, to the oval, um, I, you mentioned before, you'd be surprised if I played the same team. I would agree to that end. Um, I think it's just going to be, I think it's likely going to be a straight swap with Murphy and green. I don't, I mean, Mitch Marsh is undroppable now. I mean, he scores would be a hundred, um, he scored a 30 in that third innings at Leeds, I think it was, 50 in this game, and then 30 red in this game. Cameron Green's contributions with the ball might be slightly better. I don't think Mitch Marsh has got the overs in him um, that's Green would. And at the same time, Green doesn't really have like 25 overs in an innings in him. He never has. Um, but I th- Marsh, Marsh had surgery. I can't think what... It might have been an ankle surgery. Um, people who were in cricket would know, and that's really not my job to know what that injury was. But I get the feeling like he's not 100% fully fit with bowling bulk overs. Um, so that would be the slight downside. But like Marsh is undroppable. Plus like... Um, Four years ago, he played in the um, in the oval game and he got five for it. So that means that he'll take a five for again, and everything will be exactly the same. True, true. Um, so, but anyway, I, so I just think in terms of likely likelihoods, they'll play a spinner and uh, Marsh will play instead of Green as the all rounder. And I, I think I think it's unlikely. To, you know, I, I understand why people say they want to see Nisa nice play and whatever. I just think I just think it's unlikely you're going to drop Hazelwood or Stark. Or Cummins for Nisa. I mean, you know, like it's just it is what it is. But I, I just think oh, those three, those three bowlers are better than Nisa in I my think, opinion. I, I, mate, I look. I think they. I think you're right. I think it's unlikely they usually stick with their incumbents. Uh, but you know, trying to judge the pattern of the Australian selections, like there's only a short turnaround. Uh, I know they've had a couple of days off here, and <clears throat> you know, who knows mm. who's who's pulling up 
right or wrong, Cummins will go all the way through. You'd imagine uh, because they want to win the series. Uh, it's it's a it's a huge game. This is exactly it's not exactly, but it's very close to what happened in 2019. Felt great to retain yeah. the urn and win and and win that game at Old Trafford, and they just completely fucked up that next game at the Oval. And frankly, for the following four years, the Ashes is the, the Ashes has been regarded as the one that got away in England, and mm-hmm. and people have been upset about it. So it's a it's a massive game, even though. Um, Australia has can celebrate denying England the open top bus parade in the last ever Test series. Uh, I, mm. I, it, it depends how the bowlers pull up. Really, uh, Hazelwood he, t- he took his five uh, in the in the first innings there, but um, or the second inning, sorry. Uh, but I, I think the other bowlers do come into it. To be honest, mate, I also think that Australia was mm-hmm. so battered in this game um, that they they should be looking at different setups, you know, and I'll go, I would go as far to say that they, sh- they should be looking at Nisa, or at least looking at him. Uh, and they should mm-hmm. be looking at Boland as well because of how he played at the oval against India and uh, the world's championship final as well. I-, I think a lot of guys um, will be pushing for positions. I don't know how it actually sets up. I mean, Kratz has to be absolutely cooked at this point, doesn't he? He's played a couple in a row and basically carried the line. Uh, and mm. yeah, I also think that it will be David Warner's last test, uh, subject to how he goes in the game. As as per, I mean, I, I think he he needs a hundred in Australia to win for him not to be um, tapped on the shoulder and said thanks very much for your time. Let's move on. Um, so you know, there's there's I think there's a lot uh, that will be considered for Australia heading to this game because they got they got pumped in this game really. Um, apart from interesting, yeah, on Aki weather. I, I think. I think to that end, mate, I don't think England play Anderson. I think that might mm. be Anderson's last game for the series because there's only one left. Um, I think that Anderson, though, funnily enough, is actually more likely to play in India, which is where England's next, next test series is. Anderson, Anderson will never let you down, and, he's, and he hasn't let anyone down in this series. Like he, he never goes for runs. I just think there are better bowlers in England's squad for them to take 20 wickets quicker than Jimmy Anderson right now. He just he hasn't had a great series. I think he's taken four wickets in the series. No one saw that coming. I don't think it's the end of his career. I think he's still got plenty to add. Oh, not plenty, because he's 41. He has enough to add in his test career to get his 700 wickets, which is about 11 or 12 away, I think. I just can't see him playing at the Oval. I don't think his record is amazing anyway. I think Josh Tung comes back into it. Um, I think Ollie Robinson comes back into it. Um, and Stuart Broad has been the best bowl of the series. Wokes and Wood um, are nearly undroppable, subject to their fitness. Um, so I think Anderson is not likely to play, and then the batters will say the same. Um, but uh, that is a whole like three or four days away. So mm. um, I am going on a I'm going on a bus now. I'm just going down to Frankston or something, and um, and I'll just maybe maybe open the window, and that'll be my open top bus parade. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a quick RC to see to finish he goes uh, just at the end Ben Connolly said uh, does this justify the ECB's thinking in having no tests in the north next time around it doesn't further enhance the argument for having a test match venue in East Anglia the UK's driest area brackets preferably with a roof just to make sure and then one of those brilliant uh, patronising thumbs up emojis yeah uh, I think it's a disgrace that there is no cricket uh, no Ashes cricket in four years' time in the north of England. Um, the the fans in Leeds and Old Trafford typically give the most vibrancy, the most colour. Um, they are fantastic for the series. I think like representation for England generally, just just politically, is just so London-centric, and I think that's ridiculous. Um, so, nice. um, but yeah, if, 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 if it rains... Um, if it uh, if it rains and my team is winning, then yeah, play play everything. But Durham, um, let's let's play at Chesterley Street, uh, Trent Bridge. <laughs> um, it's not quite that far north, but uh, you know, I think every uh, every game at Old Trafford, um, as long as my team keeps winning forever, Daddy. Yeah, nice, nice little uh, um, support for the North at the end. I, I completely agree. I feel like it's a heartbeat of the Ashes up there. You got to you, you got to have cricket in the North. You must in England. Mm. But bad luck. Mm. Well, that's also. That's also because I'm scared because you know once 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 our boys go up north, you know what it's like up there, Pizza. Like they play, play the trumpet and that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, it's frightening stuff. Mem- mem- those, those memories will, will never fade. No, no. <laughs> well, that's it. Have we done that justice? I, I don't know. You know, just my, in my heart of hearts, I just think uh, sometimes it rains, and 100 percent of the time, cricket is fucked. 
Um, the main podcast is coming out later today, I think, anyway. Uh, I guess we'll just discuss that after we get some sleep. As great as this Ashes series has been, I think we can all agree the 4 a.m. Uh, finishes and just the anxiety generally, it's no good for you. Once again, cricket is fucked. Australia, 2-1. Fuck off.